morning. The man who wrote this book, May I Kiss You, his sister's rape has turned into a crusade for him, and he created the Date Safe Project, traveling the world to talk about the consent and the rights of both men and women. And we're pleased to have you and what he's doing to help others. Great to have you on The Morning Blend. Thank you both for having me here. Thank you. Your sister's rape happened in 1989. Is yes, that right? that's correct. What, it was in Janesville. What happened to her? So what happened was uh, I received a phone call. I was a college student at the time, and the phone call was from my mom. And my mom asked me if I was sitting down, and right away, you know, something's wrong. I never could have predicted what my mom was going to say next, and that was that my sister Sherry had been raped. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was filled with anger, and soon after I would have realized this anger isn't doing me any good. And I realized the opportunity to be able to speak out and maybe make a difference. And that's where this all began, from the inspiration of my sister's strength and courage. Hmm. You know, a lot of people will say, why you? Why not your sister? Why isn't she the one speaking out? Not that, you know, uh, I think just in terms of how does it affect the family and why is it the brother that's, you know, taking it to heart? Yeah, and often survivors do speak out. Mm -hmm. In my case, uh, every survivor is going to be different in how they want to move forward with their life and showing their strength and their courage. And Sherry does that. Sherry's an incredible role model for survivors out there. For me, I was a college student that I was at the time dating. Mm -hmm. And when my sister was raped, I felt like I should have been able to do something to stop it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't able to. So I was constantly looking at myself saying, what could I have done? And I started looking at sexual assault. And it said sexual assault was any sexual contact without consent. And I realized as a dating person at the time, am I supposed to ask? Who's asking? And that was the beginning of all of our work and realizing how important it was to give somebody a choice. So for me, it connected to me right away on a very personal level on how I was treating partners and then finding out my friends were doing the same thing. What, mm. Was your sister um, raped by someone that she knew? Was it a date situation or was it a stranger? So my sister's attack was not a dating situation at all. The reason we focus on dating is because that's where I was in my life when this happened that made me look in the mirror and go, hey, uh, how are you giving somebody a choice? Mm -hmm. And that's where all this work began. So Sherry's strength and courage inspired us to speak out and do this work. My own personal relation to the topic is how we began taking the strategy to try to make a difference. Well, I think it's great. One thing you talk about is the fact that there isn't really information out there about how to speak to the family members or the sexual assault victim themselves, what to say, how to approach them, how to talk about the topic. What kind of advice do you give people? Because there's probably a lot of people. I think sexual assault is, is a very common thing, unfortunately, and people want to know what to say, how to talk to the family, and how to, how to say the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question, Tiffany, and there's so many different things we want to cover in there because there's mm -hmm. everything from how to talk to a survivor who just came forward to you and how to talk to your teenagers your children about this topic right so I'll start with the survivor if a child comes forward to you or someone you love comes forward to you and says this has happened to me I think I was sexually assaulted I think I was raped uh, by the way they'll usually start with I think really because it's hard to say I was mm -hmm. that right away hits a little harder mm -hmm. you want to first realize well that took them a lot of courage to come forward and talk to me and share this with me so I want to let them know they came to the right person so look the person right in the eyes and say thank you so much for sharing clearly you're strong you're courageous what can I do to help mm. and then you listen one of the biggest mistakes parents and family members make is they say, who did this? Yeah. Or, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry this happened to you. And you see rage, you see panic. And if you're mm -hmm. a survivor, that's going to scare you. That's going to make you think, oh, you know what? I'm, I don't want to talk anymore. Maybe this mm -hmm. is going to be worse than I thought it was going to be. You want to calm down and be there for them, be present for them. That's really important for survivors. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people want to rush to the who did this, yeah. get that person in trouble, turn them in, get the law involved, whatever. And sometimes that's not the first thing that a survivor needs to hear. It's the last thing a survivor wants to hear because mm -hmm. you want to know the person you're sharing with is there for you. And mm -hmm. when you're focused on the perpetrator, it sounds like you've forgotten the whole reason yeah. that you're sitting there is the one you love, the person you care about. So that's really important. Now, and that, that's how we want to help the survivor. How to talk to our children, that's a whole other ball game. Well, let's go into that because, you know, teenagers, uh, what, what kind of age do you start talking to kids and what types of things do you say? And is it different for boys and girls? So here's the thing. When it, how to talk to your children depends on their age. You want as early as possible talk to children about their body and their boundaries. That's critically important at young ages. And then does it become age appropriate to talk about relationships and sexual decision making? biggest mistake parents make is they tend to focus on what they don't want their kids to do. Right. So they tell children, don't get pregnant, don't go too far, don't do this, don't do that. What happens is the teenager's sitting there going, all right, what 
what can I do? So who do they turn to? They turn to their friends mm -hmm. and they turn to the internet. Horrible <laughs> sources yeah. of information. I mean, just, you, we all right? know what our friends yes. are giving us at 15 and 16. Horrible yeah. information. And so you want to do the opposite as a parent. Instead of focusing on what you don't want to have happen, Talk about what you do want your child to be able to do. Like, How, give me an example at a young age, something you do want them to do. You want them to be able to ask before they kiss someone. Think about if every child out there was asking before they ever engaged in intimacy when they started dating. And when I say child, I'm talking 16, 17, 18 year old teenager who's legally old enough to have that, give that permission. Okay. But imagine if your child was always asked. Imagine if your daughter or son, every time they're on a date, the person would say, you know what, I've had a great time tonight. May I give you a kiss? they'd always have a choice. Right. And that's something most kids don't feel they have. So if you can empower them with a choice and by teaching them this, they're always giving their partner a choice, which is really important. Well, I was just going to say with kids, because I think I'm interested in knowing if you say something different to boys than you do for <laughs> girls, because I have a son and two daughters. Well, one of the things they learn at a really young age, and I'm interested in, in knowing what you think about this, is they, they they say this is my no no square. So they learn, yeah. but 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 they Stop. learn what. Don't touch me there. Yeah, this, this is my, my no no square. square. You know, <laughs> and, and it sounds it's catchy. I mean, my kids would sing it around the house. <laughs> <laughs> and they draw it out. But I do think it's it's good for them to know. Hey, there are certain parts of my body that are more private that, than touching my arm, for example, or touching your your hand or something like that. Right. But, but so what? First of all, what do you think of that? I think you have to be very careful. There's a lot of trauma that's caused by those kind of lessons. Second of all, you also lead children not being able to speak about their body in proper terms. Mm -hmm. Let's say that a child was sexually assaulted. You want them to be able to use their words to identify their body parts. Mm -hmm. My no-no square doesn't tell me what happened if I'm in front of a courtroom. Right. Okay. Uh, and so if a child can actually refer to the specific body part, that's more natural. And by the way, your hand is a body part. So is parts of your genitalia. You have no problem saying your hand. You shouldn't have a problem teaching children the parts of the genitalia. Should be very natural. Mm -hmm. And as far as how to talk to them at the right age of male or female, it's one of the biggest mistakes parents make is they think there's different rules for boys than there is for girls dating. But what happens? Children then intentionally try to fulfill those gender roles. Okay, instead so talk of being about, a good person. Okay, so talk about how we should talk to boys and girls then the, the same way. Yeah. Does everybody deserve a choice before somebody ever touches them sexually? Yes. Yes. Teach both genders that. Mm -hmm. You and your partner always deserve a choice. Mm -hmm. Do you deserve for intimacy to be wonderful? Yes. All genders deserve that. So there's really no need for gender discussion in mm -hmm. here. All males deserve to have their boundaries respected. All females deserve to have their boundaries respected. As soon as you say, you know what, let the guy ask. Let the guy make the moves. You just taught your child their partner should make all the decisions. And their job is to stop it. Hmm. Not to be able to actually have a voice. Extremely dangerous messaging. Also, if you teach a young man, well, you know what, it's your job to pay the bill. It's your job to do this and do that. It's about his job to impress instead of actually being a good person and treating someone with true respect, which is respecting their boundaries, who they are as a person, honoring their personality and, and getting to know each other. Hmm. It, it's tough because I think there's this, you're, you probably get a lot of people asking, well, what about being old fashioned and having the guy do this or the guy do that? You know, where does that come in? And how do you create, is, you know, if, if the girl's so forward, you know, how do you know she's, I don't know, not pressing him? Yeah, well, here's a great know. thing. Why shouldn't she be forward, right? I mean, right? If, if she likes him or her, whoever she likes, why shouldn't she be able to say, I really like you? Now, people and say, but should. back in the day, oh, she'd be called a horrible name, like a slut mm -hmm. or something like that, for using that kind of assertiveness. Mm -hmm. That's what's wrong with the old way, the old-fashioned way. We degraded women for having a voice. That's ridiculous. A woman should be able to say, I like you. I would love to kiss you. They should have that power to do that. You know, one of the saddest things we see happen is we're working in a school, middle school or high school, come off stage, and a 13-year-old or a 15-year-old comes up to me and says, today was the first day I realized I should have a voice. Mm. Sad. That's sad. That's a message they should have been getting for a long time, All is your life. point. One of the other things that you mm -hmm. say is that most people do not realize their current dating practices are based on standards of disrespect. That's correct. D boil that down for yeah, us. What absolutely. do you mean? Absolutely. All right, so when people go on a date, what do they tend to do? They tend to set expectations, right? Here's how tonight's going to work. And they tend to fulfill gender roles in our society because that's mm -hmm. all they've seen. 
All right, so what they do is they go out and they think, all right, if I set up the right date, if I take to the right restaurant, if I do all these things to impress, I'm going to get rewarded. And what do they think is reward? Some level Sex. of sexual intimacy, correct. Right. You know what that really is? You're describing pay for intimacy. Right. Which we have another term for that in the United States. But if you look at an average <laughs> day, right? right? We do. It's right? called prostitution. It is prostitution. Okay. But if you look at, well, I'm going to go spend all this money to impress my date, so I get. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept you're working off. It's ridiculous. It's really messed up. It's not built on respect. We always tell students, you know what a date is? It's an audition. Go out and have fun. Figure out if this person is right for the part. And by the way, they could look right. It doesn't mean they're right for the part. Right. You know being in TV, somebody can audition to be a host on TV. They can look the part. But on the audition, you go, just not right for what this show is doing. That doesn't mean they're a bad person. They're just not right for the part. Dating's the exact same thing. Go out there, audition, date, see what you like, what you don't like. That's the only way you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. I wish we had a lot more time to chat with you. I want to make sure everybody has the information because you come out to schools, colleges, military groups, other groups, parents, educators, students. You can visit and learn more at DateSafeProject.org to find out how you can have Mike Domish come to your um, group. Thanks and the so much for book being again is May I Kiss You. May I Kiss You is mm -hmm. the book. Everything's on the website and we're also very ha active on social media. If people go to our website they can link to Facebook, Twitter and follow us there. It's great. Fantastic. Thanks Mike. Thank really great information mm -hmm. and messages for our kids. Appreciate it. Yeah. Tom Cruise is a new movie